Hey everybody, welcome to another video. Today I want to talk a little bit off the cuff about the issue which has gained quite a bit of attention over the past 24 hours and that is the issue with the PlayStation 5 Liquid Metal. The issue which has been in the media recently and on several YouTube channels which I do genuinely appreciate is that when using the PlayStation 5 in a vertical position it's causing liquid metal to spill down the sides of the APU and cause basically catastrophic issues with the PlayStation 5. My name has obviously been mentioned quite a lot because I am one of the people who has brought this issue to light. So I thought it would be best coming from the horse's mouth and I want to try and kind of explain a little bit about the issues and what I found as a technician and also whether your console is going to be at risk. I also want to try and address a few of the comments which I've seen on both Twitter and on my own YouTube channel as well. So with that being said, if you are new to the channel, my name is The Coder. I am an electronics repair technician who mainly focuses on game consoles. My specialty subject is obviously PlayStation 5s. I see a lot of them. I see a lot of different issues and I see a lot of different common issues as well. So the PlayStation 5 has got quite a lot of design flaws. One of those is down to an electronic circuit, which I won't get into in this video. If you do want me to make that video, let me know and I'll, and I'll make that video as well. But the main issue, or rather the hot topic at the minute, is obviously the liquid metal. Now, with the PlayStation 5, you'll see here that I've got a board, and I've actually got a few boards lying around. Uh, this one has been declared dead. This one is going to be fixed on a live stream actually tonight, so check that out in about four hours from when the video is posted. I'm going to be working on that board. Not a clue what's wrong with it, but we're going to try anyway. But anyway, as you can see, the way that the APU is designed, I can go to the overhead cam and show this as well. So we've got some boards here. So this is the PlayStation 5. This has been declared dead. I can't figure out what's wrong with this particular board. But if we take a look at a PlayStation 4 as a base for comparison, you'll see some very similar designs. So the APU, which is the accelerated processing unit, it's essentially just the graphics chip and the CPU combined into one chip. The design is very similar. It does share a lot of design features with the PlayStation 4, for example. So let's say, for example, you've got the APU here and the APU is here on the PS4. And then you've got some voltage regulation going on down here. Same as here, you've got some voltage regulation. You've got some MOSFETs here and the MOSFETs are actually on the other side of the board on the PlayStation 5 underneath this thermal putty or rather viscous paste but there are some very similar things going on here and one of those is the way that the APU is comprised so on the APU, on the substrate of the APU which is this bit around here, it's basically a PCB and then you've got the die in the middle so the liquid metal is cooling the die and that's all that really needs to be cooled. However, because liquid metal is exactly that, it's liquid and it's metal, because of gravity, when it's in the vertical position, it's actually sitting like this. So it's this, this part here would be on the bottom. And as you can see by this here, if we look at the liquid metal, you'll see that it will slowly start to sleep and group up on one side. Now, this liquid metal has been freshly reapplied, and there's actually the perfect amount of liquid metal on here. However, on one where it hasn't been messed with, I don't think this has been messed with. Actually, it might have been. Um, yeah, it has. Okay, never mind. Uh, however, on one that hasn't been messed with, there's probably around about twice as much liquid metal on the APU. So this is what the APU is meant to look like with the protective foam and also uh, the protected, protective tape, I think it is. It's some sort of tape. So if we take off this here, you'll see on here, <laughs> someone's already done it. <laughs> this is one of three which I bought off eBay and it looks like someone's already had a little bit of an attempt at protecting that area. So maybe someone's... Seen, seen my videos in the past or seen another source where people have reported it as an issue. So I guess I'll grab another board. And this is number two of three, which I purchased. This was one of three, I couldn't fix this one. 
This was two of three, uh, so let's say this is three of three. I purchased these all off the same seller, so this one might be the same. This one, I don't actually know what's wrong with these. Like I said, I'm going to be attempting to repair these on a live stream tonight. And yeah, there we go. So we've got the protective cover on this one. And if we take a look here, you'll see, I mean, actual fact, and this is genuine. I have not messed with this board at all. I genuinely only received these a few days ago. I've worked on one. I made a video on that. I haven't released it yet, but I've worked on this one and I'm going to be working on these two, hopefully tonight. But as you can see here, liquid metal has started to seep and it started to seep that way towards the VRMs. And this is an EDM 020, so this is the 1100 series board. This one is the EDM 010, so it's going to be the first revision. I know there's a colour difference between these two, don't worry about that. That is purely based on when it was manufactured and where it was manufactured. Uh, it's just the conformal coating on the board. But essentially, the Conformal coating doesn't make a difference, but these two here are completely different models. Now, we do have another model which has been recent, recently released, which is the 1200 series, and I'm going to be doing a teardown on that and trying to get a comparison on that soon. But essentially what's meant to happen here is Sony's put the liquid metal on, and then this part here, this tape, is supposed to seal these capacitors, this big bank of capacitors around the substrate. And then this foam here is supposed to protect it from leaking out onto the rest of the board. So it's supposed to protect it from leaking onto some of the RAM circuits, some of the 5 volt circuit, uh, the VRMs, up by the HDMI, etc, etc. And what we found is that it just does not do an effective job. As you can see here, I genuinely have not touched this at all. I haven't looked at this at all, but you can see that it's not just here where it's happened. It's also happened down here as well. Now granted, that could have happened in transit. These did have to be posted to me, I bought them on eBay. So that could have happened during transit and you know, it might not be Sony's fault, it could have been dropped or anything could have happened. I just don't know until I actually look at these two boards. But essentially, the design in which Sony has tried to protect it, they have tried to protect it, and generally it does do a good job, but the design, in my opinion, is inadequate. It doesn't do as good of a job as it's supposed to do, and as technicians, we are seeing this issue quite regular. So much so where it's becoming a pretty much a, a first stop, a first check. We, if we get a no power issue or a two second blue light of death where the light will come on and then it'll turn back off, generally what we'll do is we'll check the liquid metal first because it is that common. Now, what I do want to say is that there's a lot of people worried uh, who have been reading the articles or watching the YouTube videos and things like that discussing this situation. And I do want to say that for most people, it's probably going to be fine for most people. This is probably not going to be quite as bad of a epidemic as the Red Ring of Death, for example. However, it is an issue. And I've also seen a lot of comments where people have said, well, mine's been vertical for two years, but I haven't had this issue, so you must be, you must be lying. It's just a way to get views, it's just a way to get clicks, it's just a way to get people to come onto your site or follow you on Twitter. <laughs> That's not the case. That is not the case at all. And the reason I say that is because by that logic, you could say that absolutely anything is false. Are you saying that the, uh, the old coughing pandemic was false because you didn't catch it? Are you saying that cancer is false because you haven't got it? No. So if you can't apply the logic to those situations, then how can you apply that logic to this situation? Just because it hasn't happened to you, it does not mean that it's not an issue. But also, at the same time, it does not mean that it will happen to you. If you want to be safe and you're able to, then you can put the console in a horizontal position. But it's not, a, it's not at a point yet where we're seeing every single console come in with this, this exact issue. It's 
literally, you know, probably one in 10 or one in 20. I don't know, I haven't kept track. Personally, I've seen about 10 or 15 of these in the two years that I've been working on them. That's quite a lot for me. That is quite a lot. I'm not a busy, I mean, I'm in my loft. I work from my loft. I don't work in a shop. I don't have a retail location. I perform repairs in my loft, in my house, and I mainly do it for YouTube content. I don't really advertise anywhere at all, apart from on YouTube. If people want to send something for repair, they'll send it for repair, but for the most part, it's stuff that I'm buying. And I'm seeing this issue quite a lot. So, essentially, it is an issue, regardless of what people say. How big of an issue, we don't know. We need, realistically, we need Sony to comment, and we also need to see the design differences when the apparent PlayStation 4 Slim or sorry PlayStation 5 Slim or PlayStation 5 Pro get released. We're not going to know until we see what kind of design changes they do in terms of liquid metal and in terms of if they do use liquid metal do they change the protection. Now I would say that one way that you could definitely protect yourself would be to open up the console and you could use some conformal coating kind of like I've done in other videos where I've had to take the seal off or where I've had to clean up the liquid metal because it's spilt underneath the seal. I use conformal coating and that protects you in terms of the capacitors on top of the substrate but it's not going to protect you against spills on the motherboard itself so it's not going to protect it from going over the foam or seeping under the foam and making its way onto the motherboard and hitting for example the VRMs. So it's not going to protect you 100%. The only way to protect you 100% would be to coat the entire board, and that's obviously just not viable. Uh, it would be a massive thing to do. Uh, you would need a very big UV light if you wanted to cure it. You can use something called solder mask, which is a UV curable kind of ink, and it cures really, really hard, and it will insulate any electronic circuit but it's obviously not cheap. Well, it is cheap, but if you wanted to do the entire board, yeah, not an option. You could also use something called liquid tape. So liquid insulation tape, kind of similar to solder mask or conformal coating. It would insulate it, it would cure, it would harden, and you could do it with that. Or you could also use something like nail varnish as well. So if you've got some nail varnish lying around, you could cover it in that. That would, of course, mean opening up the console and potentially voiding your warranty. Uh, if you make any kind of modifications to the board at all, I will say 100% you are absolutely going to avoid any warranty. So if it is still in warranty, don't do it. Don't do this until it comes out of warranty because you don't want to jeopardise any future repair that Sony might offer under the warranty programme. Now, a lot of people have also been saying they've used liquid metal on their PC for years and they've never had a problem, etc, etc. And I absolutely agree with them. However... The design of a PC is much different to a PS5. The design of a PC, when you use liquid metal, it's generally a user which is doing it. And For example, I've used liquid metal both on my laptop and on my PC in the past. I don't currently use them because it's not needed. I've got a high-end PC which is capable of doing everything I need to do without overclocking. But I have used liquid metal in the past and I didn't have an issue myself. But the point I'm trying to make here is that when people apply liquid metal to a PC, they take precautionary measures. Precautionary measures which are far more effective than what Sony have taken in the PlayStation 5. So when you apply liquid metal to a PC or a laptop, yes, we do use conformal coating or nail varnish or liquid tape. We do take those measures and it does prevent any damage. And also, as well, the design of the CPU inside the socket and things like that is much different to a PS5. The CPU hasn't got a bunch of capacitors on the top of the uh, CPU, on top of the substrate, and the PS5 has. So that's another issue. If, if any of those capacitors short out, they are incredibly sensitive. Incredibly sensitive. Don't forget they are connected directly to the CPU or the APU. The reason that they're so close to the CPU or the APU is because they want to keep them with as little noise as possible on the line. I'm not an engineer, I know my t-shirt says I'm out, I am, but I'm not qualified, so I don't know everything about them. But you keep it close to the CPU, as close as possible, which is hence the reason for the decoupling caps on the back as well, because it's in direct contact and as, sh as short of a path as possible. They want to reduce noise and they want to reduce impedance and things on the, on the circuit. 
Uh, one person that is absolutely fantastic at explaining that stuff is Dave Jones from EEV Blog. Highly recommend checking him out. Um, he can explain why decoupling caps are the way they are and things like that way better than me. I understand it. I cannot relay that message because I'm not an engineer and I'm not a teacher. Uh, well, I am kind of a teacher, but yeah. Um, yeah, so I just want to say that, number one, thank you to all of the channels and all of the media outlets which have, which have been covering this issue. It is definitely an issue and it does need sorting out. Uh, Sony do need to take some action. It will be interesting to see what Sony have got to say about this. I also want to say thank you to um, especially bigger channels like Linus Tech Tips, Spawn Wave and a lot of other channels uh, which I'm expecting will probably drop a video on the subject over the next 24 hours or so. This is going absolutely viable and yeah, I just wanted to try and address some. So I hope I've cleared some things up, but if I haven't, then you are more than welcome to ask me in the comments down below. Ask me in the comments, I'll do my best to answer as best as I can with the knowledge that I've got. I'm no genius by any stretch of the imagination. I know my way around a PS5, I know my way around an Xbox Series X, I know my way around MacBooks, but I'm not qualified. So there are far more qualified people out there than me that can explain this better. But liquid metal, gravity, bad. Try and take preventative measures if you can, but if you can't, don't worry too much because it's probably not going to affect you. If it does, you are going to be unlucky. And if it does affect you, then it can be fixed. Yes, granted, it's going to cost money, but it can be fixed if it is an issue. It's not actually completely killing them. Usually when this happens, it can be fixed. But with that being said, that is going to be it for now. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like on the video if you found it useful. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye for now.